Sponsored by Squarespace. The worst enemy is one you can't see coming. Stalking through the Polish countryside is a new type of tank that the world was blind to, literally because it was stealth. That's right, 10 years ago, engineers took the same design ideas that put the famous Nighthawk stealth fighter on the map and applied it to modern cavalry. Even more surprising is that this armor platform that could strike first and disappear into the darkness was made by none other than Poland. We've covered some wacky black ops projects on this channel, everything from stealth jets to stealth boats, but this one might just take the cake. Tune in for today's adventure in the story of how the Polish built a tank that was ahead of its time, that was really hidden from plain sight, and why it never made it past the prototype phase. This is the PL-01, the so-called Stealth Tank. Poland, the country of a long military history, proud people, pierogi, and beaver memes. Bubr kurwa! It's also got the best military imagination I've ever seen, coming up with crazy concepts like the Scorpion, the stealthy A-10 that we've covered here on the channel. But this obsession with stealth technology also applies to our hero of the story today, the PL-01. When first unveiled in 2013 at a military exhibition in Poland, this tank sparked huge controversy and media attention because it looked straight out of the Halo universe, with the design of a stealth aircraft and the paint job in the same manner. Being covered in radar absorbent materials, this tank would feasibly be invisible against airborne radars, making enemy aircraft, the natural predator of tanks, unable to find them as well as a magnitude of other secret stealth capabilities that would make it blend into the countryside, even to natural sight. It was such a revolution that it was apparently the start of a new generation of tanks with stealth and first strike capability built in mind, a huge upgrade from every tank design ever made before. You see, ever since the dawn of time, well, more like World War II, which saw the first massive combat use of tanks and other vehicles, there's been a concept of light tanks and tank destroyers. A light tank was designed around the idea to outmaneuver heavier armored vehicles and perform recon and flanking missions in the battlefield. It wouldn't exactly have the heavy armor of a bigger tank, but it did have enough to survive less lethal threats like small caliber weapons and shrapnels. On the other hand, tank destroyers focused on mobility, massive frontal armor, and camouflage focused on ambushes and elimination of high value vehicles of the enemy forces. Over time, these two tanks would eventually evolve and merge together to form the main battle tank concept. But the problem is with the main battle tank is that they're rather a jack of all trades and a master of none. The PL-01 plan to fix that. This tank project was not successful. <laughs> Spoilers of course, but you probably already figured that out from the title. But I can't help but wonder that just because the tank is invisible, does it mean that the marketing for it had to be invisible as well? Perhaps it's something that the engineers could have avoided if they had just used Squarespace and its brand new fluid engine. A mistake you can also avoid with your own business. While not designed to make tanks vanish into thin air, the Fluid Engine's impressive drag and drop technology makes it making a website a breeze, including one for mobile and desktop automatically. Now hold your horses, I've got a preview for the next video right here, but I want to speak a little bit more about how there's hundreds of templates to choose from, plus ones that have an online store already all set up for you. You just have to add products. In fact, it's something that I use to make my own store for the channel, found at explain.shop, for all your own cool merch. Now, I bet you're like, I love you, Found and Explained, but what has Found and Explained actually done for me lately? I don't come to you empty handed because I can give you 10% off your first site and domain at www.squarespace.com found and anyone who clicks that link gets my gratitude and thanks for making everything that you see here on the channel possible. And also a big warm hug, although you probably have to come here because I'm not traveling to you. Back to the show. Essentially, the PL-01 is a light tank, a dying breed in modern warfare, but it did have a revolutionary twist. 
The design itself is based on the Swedish CV-90, which had a light tank roll and a 120mm gun in a turret, but the comparison stops there. For one, the PL-01 had a completely unmanned turret with an autoloader. This is a concept in which the Russian T-14 Armata is built around and enhances the survivability of the crew along with downsizing the crew to only three members, a driver, gunner and commander. And survivability is key here as it's a little lighter on the armor side. The vehicle itself is covered in modular reactive armor as the base armor is very light and could not survive any modern Sabot rounds or ATGMs. In general, the PL-01 is not meant to fight against other tanks because that's a losing battle. It was supposed to ambush them and run, which is what the role of a tank destroyer was throughout history. This sci-fi looking gun barrel is also not actually sci-fi at all, but it's not just a gimmick either. The covering of the barrel was designed to deflect incoming shrapnel from indirect artillery, important because a damaged barrel means the tank as a whole is out of combat for a period of time and would render the entire vehicle useless. To get in and out of the vehicle, the driver had his own separate hatch and the rest of the crew would actually leave from the rear of the tank, similar to the Israeli Merkava. However, the massive add-on armor was supplemented with active protection systems, something that the modern battlefield proved to be a necessary feature for combat vehicles and is aimed to defeat RPGs or ATGMs fired by the enemy. And of course, as any modern tank would have, the PL-01 had incredible hunter-killer features. It had a panoramic sight for the commander where he could operate autonomously and search for new targets whilst the gunner engaged the enemy. And boy, we've got to talk about that huge gun. The main armament was either a 105 or 120 mm smoothbore gun aligned with NATO standards, as well as a 50 cal machine gun that could be operated remotely. On top of the turret, there was also another remote station that was equipped with another 50 cal machine gun, a minigun, or a 40 mm automatic grenade launcher. From the start though, there is one big issue with this vehicle. Even though the turret was completely autonomous, only 16 rounds were fitted in the turret back and the rest of the ammunition, another 24 rounds, was situated inside the vehicle. And this, as we know, is bad. One stray shot that goes inside the actual crew chamber would engulf the entire side into an inferno that I am not going to model in 3D. But the real elephant in the room is the tank's stealth capability, or rather the myth behind it. Detection of enemies has evolved over time. Once upon a time, binoculars were your best bet at detecting the enemy vehicles. However, nowadays thermal images, night vision and even radars with SAR capabilities will detect the vehicle and once it's in your sights, there's plenty of ways to dispatch it. So how can you hide a tank on the modern battlefield? One of the main solutions to this problem are special covers like the German Barracuda or the Russian Nikitka, which are actively used in combat. And they're meant to decrease the thermal signature of the tank from either land or air. What was new with the PL-01 was the use of radiant absorption materials on the hull that would help against airborne radars and make the tank hard to target from the air. Its deep black paint job would also make it blend into the deep forests of Poland and invisible at night to the naked eye. But they didn't stop there. The PL-01 was also equipped with active measures like smoke chargers. In fact, they went overkill with two launchers on the turret that would disgorge a ton of smoke if the tank detected any laser painting, or if they just generally needed to disappear in a puff of smoke. Lastly, the tank also had other engineering solutions to minimize their thermal signature and of course, reduce its radar cross-section. Now, let's just touch on those RAM materials. They're actually quite expensive and sensitive, which is not a good idea for a tank. Because in order to get into combat, a tank needs to move through the terrain. Unlike a stealth jet that only has to deal with a little bit of wind and rain, 
This had to move through forests, bumping into trees, going through the landscape, scraping away all that expensive materials and giving it all sorts of shiny bumps for radar to pick up on. The whole stealth system was just media hysteria based off the mean looks of the PL-01. In reality, it was just a very modern concept of a armored vehicle, with many of the systems present on other latest tanks like the Leopard 2A8 or the latest version of the M1A2. So whatever happened with the PL-01? In Poland, hopes were high. They were joined by British BAE Systems who hoped to make an absolute bank off this new stealth tank. But the reality is that this vehicle was just a concept. The prototype that they presented wasn't even a real prototype, but rather a mock-up vehicle, a modified CV-90, that was not even nearly finished. Just a empty shape with some fancy systems slapped on the top with a lick of black paint. The Polish firm Obram, the manufacturer, basically tried to get external funding for this project after the media event from investors abroad, but they failed not only to do this, but also alienate the Polish army, who at the time was not interested in such a vehicle. Even though it had great marketing, especially with the looks, and the British BAE systems involved in the project, it was just too expensive and too complicated for Poland. The PL-01 was eventually scrapped in 2015 and remained just a showcase of a promise of the future of warfare. But on the other hand, this tank was actually a true vision concept for modern tanks as we know them today. Poland has evolved a lot in terms of military capabilities and is nowadays one of the largest military forces in Europe, armed with the best and latest from the whole world and with an admirable fleet of tanks consisting of Leopard, Abrams and Korean K1s. So maybe there is a future for this Polish tank based on all of these experiences and we might actually see them come back to us with a version 2.0 of this stealth tank. 